People would definitely die if this shortage is not resolved. Let's take a listen to this story. An already very vulnerable population faces a shortage of drugs to fight cancer. Some are going to Congress to press for solutions. Dr. David Margraff is a pharmaceutical research scientist in the Center for Infectious Disease Research at the University of Minnesota who works on the Resilient Drug Supply Project, and he joins us to talk about this. Good morning. Good morning, Brendan. So first off, um, please explain to us what are the drugs that are in short supply and really how serious is the shortage? There are several cancer drugs that are in shortage right now. Some of these are newer therapies and others are fairly old, such as cisplatin and carboplatin. Um, the, the main uh, problem with them is uh, some of them, these are not profitable drugs to manufacture anymore. So there is limited supply. Well, and, and that's sort of hard to hear when you hear that you, you're, you when you respond to the uh, big pharma, I guess, or the pharmaceutical companies. So you don't make money on this or enough money so that's why these patients have to suffer i believe that's a calculation they have to to make there's not only the pharmaceutical company taking profits uh, but many of the older drugs uh, they have very few sources so the active pharmaceutical ingredient or key starting materials may only be made in one or two uh, production facilities so uh, in between that stage you to get the drug to the patient, there's a lot of people in the middle uh, with regards to money that soak up a lot of that profit. And, and it's not like you can just go to a different pharmacy either. So what are the options for doctors and patients? In the short term, uh, doctors and patients are going to have to find strategies that work for each case. So each drug shortage in each patient, this may require searching for the drug in other locations, uh, contacting the manufacturer, or finding an alternate therapy that may have more side effects and less efficacy. So uh, it doesn't sound like you could go to some of these pharmaceutical companies and say, well, can you just make more? What is the solution here? How, I mean, how long could this actually go on? Uh, it could continue indefinitely unless we solve this. I think the long-term solution for many of these low-cost, or excuse me, low-profit generic sterile injectables is to have some sort of incentivization to either produce them back in the United States or in a neighboring country where they're easier to get to and to have some robust and transparent supply chain, not only within the drug manufacturing, but in the cost structure, because that plays a big role in a lot of these shortages. Well, so is the thinking here that you would look for private, um, you know, funding sources, or, or is this something that you would go to the government and, and look it for taxpayer be, money? It could be uh, both varying degrees, so a public-private partnership would work. Yeah, well, and, and of course, if it has to be run through the budget, that would take that. I guess that's where your your long term problem would come in. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe that we're going to have to eventually subsidize some of these life saving medications. The, the drug, drug shortages within the oncology space are uh, pretty drastic and you have other life threatening uh, chronic diseases and uh, critical um, diseases as well. And many of these drugs need to have some sort of uh, robust, transparent, and easy to attain uh, production. Yeah, and meanwhile, these vulnerable patients are the ones stuck in the middle. All right. Absolutely. All right, Dr. David Margraff, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. So then it says, in institutions, as institutions start to run out of chemotherapy or recognize that the shortage is going to be a little more prolonged, they'll start rationing the amount of product they're using. They'll change patients to alternative treatments. The only issue with that is if a patient can only take a certain kind of medication, if their body only responds to a certain medication, this would be a big problem for some patients. Um, another issue is some people are so allergic to all to a lot of different um medications, the ingredients that's in the medications, and they can only take certain medications. Um, and there's no substitutions. You cannot substitute, you know, that medication for X, Y, and Z. It just would not work for that patient. And once again, that would be a problem. Goes on to say no, pa no patient should have to hear the words. We do not have medication to treat you, which no patient should have to hear those words. But 
Where's the medication coming from? Where is it manufactured? Out of what country it's coming from? There's a lot that, you know, plays a part in these shortages as well. Um, the drug shortages are becoming more prevalent due to a warped marketplace. The three largest managers control 80% of commercial drug sales. Um, they say lawmakers say the country is only using half of its drug manufacturing capacity right now. So they would have to go ahead and use the other half. Um, I don't know. Do you guys think that there will be a solution to this here medication shortage? These are medications for patients who actually is going through chemotherapy right now. And it says it right here on the screen. People will die if we do not solve this shortage. Now listen to this. So the subcommittee chair also blamed the FDA for making drug shortages worse. He says the agency's response has been to allow foreign-made generics to come into the U.S. market without restrictions. So they made a claim that a better solution would be to prioritize applications from U.S. manufacturers. So not only are they not prioritizing um, applicants from the U.S., they're saying let's get the foreign-made generics into the U.S. market without any restrictions. And if that's not holding us back, not being able to produce within our own country, but yet there's a major shortage of medication, especially this very important medication at that. Mm -mm -mm. They just want to let people fall off the road, fall off the tree, fall off of a limb. However it is that you want to people put it. It's ridiculous. So we're going to continue to be strong for those who do face these type of obstacles. If you know someone who is facing this obstacle, you know, certain medications are already in short supply. Certain people cannot get their medications and the cost of medication is without insurance. And even with insurance, depending on your deductible, the cost of certain medications are just outright, outright ridiculous as well. So God bless you all. I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here where it's at. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Just remember, they're saying that they don't want the medication to be produced. There's a list for the medication um, to be produced in the U.S. basically. But yes, the medication can come from foreign countries without basically being properly inspected. Strange, right? Um... So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in into today's video. This is Shauna, and I'm officially checking out from Moments With Us. Make sure that you all stay prepped, blessed, and safe. Have a great weekend. It's a long weekend. It is Memorial Day weekend. So you guys stay safe this weekend. I know y'all going to be grilling, and some people going to be having get-togethers and things like that. So you all stay safe this weekend. Have some fun. Let go live a little bit, you know, but... Just stay safe. Um, I'm going to catch y'all next video. Peace.